Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to AP Physics 2, Unit 3, Lesson 7. In this lesson, I want to do some examples with circuits. So here are two circuits we're going to look at. Each circuit has a 12 volt battery. And then connected to this 12 volt battery, we have one, two capacitors. And these capacitors are connected in series. In this circuit, we have the same 12 volt battery, but instead it is connected to one, two, three capacitors in series. The two and the four microfarad capacitors are still there, <clears throat> but I've added a one microfarad capacitor as well. So a couple things to notice. Uh, capacitors are drawn with two parallel line segments. Batteries are also drawn with two parallel line segments, but they are of unequal length. And then the unit for capacitance is the farad, capital F. <clears throat> two microfarads is the same as two micro um, coulombs per volt. A farad is a coulomb per volt. And micro means times 10 to the minus sixth. So two times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs per volt. So the quantity capacitance is measured in the unit farads. And one farad is a large amount of capacitance. So usually capacitors are uh, numbers of micro or millionths of farads. So let's just start by looking at this one. And what I want to do is I want to redraw this circuit. And I'm going to redraw it um, so that this battery has the same experience, but I'm going to redraw it with one capacitor instead of two. And what that's going to allow me to do is examine things like um, 12 volts. So I have an increase in potential of 12 volts. And I have two places where I'm going to have a decrease in potential because I have to get back where I started. The potential here is the potential here. So if I go up 12 volts, I must go down 12 volts to get back to here. <clears throat> so somehow this change plus this change must be a decrease in 12 volts. The question is, you know, do I go down six volts and six volts? Maybe. Or if I go down different amounts, is there a greater potential change on the larger capacitance capacitor? Or is there a greater potential change on the smaller capacitance capacitor? Those are all kinds of things that we might wonder. And then, of course, I'm also going to look at, hey, uh, what's the charge on this one? And what's the charge on this one? And how are they related to each other? So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this circuit. So I'm going to redraw it right down here. I'm going to have a 12 volt battery, same battery. But instead of connecting it to those two, I'm going to connect it to this one. So it looks like this. So that circuit has become this circuit. And I'm going to move this. So I've got this one. And this is a capacitor. And I want to know what its capacitance is. And I'm going to call that C sub EQ. The capacitance is measured in the unit farads, which means coulombs per volt. I know it's confusing. There's a capital C there. And there's a capital C there. That is the quantity capacitance that is the unit coulombs. They're different. <clears throat> now, this is a much simpler circuit. I go up 12 volts. I must go down 12 volts. So I'm going to write 12 volts right here. I know the potential difference across the capacitor um, is 12 volts. Um, as charges would travel from one place to another, they would lose Every coulomb of charge that passes across here would lose 12 joules of energy. Remember, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So um, I also have that equation that we talked about in previous uh, videos. Q equals CV. So I want to find the capacitance and I know the potential. So now I know V is 12. 
I'm looking for the capacitance. So maybe it's going to be helpful for me to find the charge here. Now, I don't just have some random capacitor because right now I'm like, oh, I don't know C and I don't know Q. It's just a 12 volt battery. <clears throat> but remember, I want this circuit to be equivalent to this one. I want this uh I want this battery to have the same experience as this one had. So we developed in the last video a formula for combining capacitors in series. Do you remember it? We said one over the equivalent capacitance is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2. So one over C equivalent here is going to equal two and four. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4. Now you might be saying, wait, that's 2 times 10 to the minus 6th and 4 times 10 to the minus 6th. I could do that. Or I could just say, hey, I'm going to put in 2 and 4, and I know my answer is not going to come out in farads. It's going to come out in micro farads. So try that both ways. I'll show you how in a minute. But first of all, let's do this easier math. 1 over C equivalent equals, I need a common denominator. The way I make these have a common denominator of four is I multiply by two over two. Two over two equals one, so I can multiply by that and not change anything. But now this is two fourths plus one fourth, one over C equivalent equals three fourths. So C equivalent equals four thirds. C equivalent is four thirds micro farads. <clears throat> so Q, the charge on here, equals four thirds micro farads times 12 volts. All right. Now I said, try this both ways. If you're having a question mark about, ooh, can he do that? Just write two times 10 to the minus sixth, four times 10 to the minus sixth. And you go ahead and find a common denominator and do the math and solve for C equivalent. And I promise you will find the answer is four thirds times 10 to the minus sixth. So go through and do that if you wish. But right now what I've done is I found this capacitor has a capacitance of four thirds microfarads. And we know that the potential drop across it, the potential difference across it is 12 volts. Up 12, gotta go down 12 to get back where I started. So now I can find the charge, four times 12, 12 times four is 48, 48 over three is 16. And the unit for charge is coulombs and there's a micro in there, so it's micro coulombs. So I'm going to write 16 micro coulombs. And what you're seeing is there's a lot of writing here. On a circuit, you're going to write a lot of numbers. By every capacitor, you're going to write a voltage, a capacitance, and a charge. So make things big. Now, in order for this battery to have exactly the same experience as I'm folding my paper, so it's going to be easier for you to see. In order for this battery and this battery to have the same experience, look at the charge. Four thirds, no, I'm sorry, the charge. 16 microcoulombs. 16 microcoulombs of charge traveled through the battery, which means 16 microcoulombs of charge have to travel through the battery which means the charge here must be 16 micro coulombs. That's where the charge comes from. And where does it go? It goes over here. So the charge on this one must also be 16 micro coulombs. I'm about to say a sentence that is worthy of pausing and writing down. The charge on a capacitor is the same as the charge on each capacitor in series that the equivalent capacitor replaces. So this one replaced these two. 
These two are in series replaced by this one. So I take this charge and I write it there and there. <clears throat> Again, the sentence is the charge on a capacitor, the charge on an equivalent capacitor is the same as the charge on each of the capacitors in series that it replaced. All right. And then what I do is I go back to this diagram and I use the equation Q equals CV. I'm going to use this equation Q equals CV a lot. So, you know, we just write it all over our page. I'm given Q, the charge. I'm given C, the capacitance. What I'd like to find is the potential drop. So maybe I could solve this equation for V. V equals Q over C. Q, the charge over C, the capacitance. 16 micro over two micro is eight and the micros cancel. So I get eight volts. V, Q over C, 16 over four is four. And hey, look, eight plus four is 12. I go up 12 volts, I go down four, I go down eight, and I get back where I started. <clears throat> so things to see, things to notice. The charge on capacitors in series is the same, charge in coulombs. The one with the bigger capacitance actually ended up with a smaller potential drop. The one with the smaller capacitance had a bigger potential drop. And in fact, those capacitances were in a ratio two to one, and the voltage drops were in a ratio one to two. Hmm, interesting. So one way of approaching this circuit would be to try to say, you know, hey, I've got three potential drops that have to add up to 12. And they probably should be, if the capacitances are in a ratio one to two to four, then maybe the voltage drops should be in a ratio one to two to four. You could think about it that way. Or we could do this fun math. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the fun math. Let's redraw the circuit with a 12 volt battery and one capacitor. C equivalent. And what is that equivalent capacitance when it's replacing three capacitors? We remember one over C equivalent equals one over C1 plus one over C2 plus two plus one over C3. One over C equivalent equals one over one and two and four. One over one plus one over two plus one over four. My common denominator is four. Four over four is the same as one. Two over four is the same as a half. And one over four is the same as a fourth. That's four, five, six, seven fourths. So C equivalent is not seven fourths, it's four sevenths micro farads. You see it? C equivalent is four sevenths micro farads. Okay. Uh, right. <clears throat> Just making sure I did it right, redoing the math. Now, there's the capacitance. I know the voltage, V equals 12 volts. That's the potential drop across, up 12, down 12, back where I started. So now I know the capacitance and the voltage. I wanna know the charge and Q equals CV. This times this, 12 times four is 48 sevenths micro coulombs. <clears throat> it's a lot easier if you just leave these things as fractions than it would have been if you had turned them into decimals. So there I have 48 sevenths. Do you remember that sentence? The charge on an equivalent capacitor is the same as the charge on each capacitor in series that it replaced. So I'm going to take this 48 sevenths microcoulombs and I'm going to write it there. And there, and there. <clears throat> and then I want to find the potential difference. And V is Q over C. So here's Q over C. 48 sevenths divided by one is 48 sevenths 
Uh, and we're talking about a voltage drop, so it's volts. Okay, 48 sevenths volts. Q over C, 48 sevenths divided by two is 24 sevenths. And 48 sevenths divided by four is 12 sevenths. Are these in fact in a ratio one to two to four with the small one being here and the big one being here? One times two times two. They are in that ratio. Yay. And do these three potential differences in fact add up to 12 volts? Is 48 sevenths plus 24 sevenths plus 12 sevenths equal to 12? Well, 48... 58, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 84. Is 84 over 7 equal to 12? Is 84 divided by 7 <gasps> equal to 12? It is. Yay. So I go up 12 volts. I go down, 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 a total of 12 volts. That is how we approach uh, capacitors when they are in series. We redraw the picture so that the capacitors in series are replaced by a single capacitor. We find out information about it, like the charge on it, and we take that charge and we assign that charge to each of these capacitors. Then we use Q equals CV to find other information, and then we check and see if everything's right. Okay, now we could do the same thinking with capacitors in parallel. So I've drawn two circuits, each with a 12 volt battery, this one with two capacitors, two and four microfarads, and this one with three capacitors, one and two and four microfarads, very much like our original two circuits, but here all the capacitors are arranged in series. And here, all the capacitors are arranged in parallel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this circuit. Let's see if I can fit it all on one page. Maybe that's not a good idea. We shouldn't crowd things, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna redraw this as one circuit with one capacitor. And this one replaces these two. 12 volt battery, <laughs> how many farads is this capacitor? Well, you might remember in the last video, for parallel, we said equivalent capacitance is just equal to C1 plus C2. So this is actually easier. Four plus two is six microfarads. Mm. Okay. So that was a lot easier. What about these ones? I can redraw as one circuit with one capacitor, same battery, 12 volts, but four, five, six, seven microfarads of capacitance. All right. And again, if I go up 12 volts, I go down 12 volts. So I can write 12 volts here for the same reason I can write 12 volts there. And now hmm, voltage is charge over capacitance. So voltage is charge. I already know the voltage and I know the capacitance. What I'm looking for is the, what's left? I've got the capacitance. I'm looking for the charge, right? Oh, okay. So charge <clears throat> is equal to CV. So charge here is the capacitance times the voltage, 12 times six, is 72, 72 micro coulombs. 12 times seven is 84 micro coulombs. <clears throat> now the question is, what do I write on these two? Do I take this voltage and write it here and here? Do I take this charge and write it here and here? Do I take this capacity? No, I've already got different capacitances. So remember on these, I, I turned this one into, where'd that piece of paper go? Well, I took this one 
and I turned it into this one. And I took the charge on the one and I wrote it on each capacitor. That was only true for capacitors in series. The charge on an equivalent capacitor is the same as the charge on each capacitor in series that it replaced. Not true for parallel. For parallel, it's the voltage. The voltage across one capacitor is the same as the voltage across each capacitor in parallel that it replaced. So I'm going to write 12 volts here. I'm going to write 12 volts there. Ooh, this one is also 12 volts. So I write 12 volts here, 12 volts there, and 12 volts there. The potential difference across an equivalent capacitor is the same as the potential difference across each capacitor in parallel that it replaced, not in series, in parallel. <clears throat> and now, through the magic of Q equals CV, the charge is the capacitance times the voltage. 12 times 4 is 48. It's a charge, microcoulombs. 12 times 2 is 24. It's a charge, microcoulombs. 12 times 1 is 12 microcoulombs. 12 times 2 is 24 microcoulombs. 12 times 4 is 48 microcoulombs. And again, each capacitor has three things written next to it, a potential, a capacitance, and a charge. And what we can see is uh, how much charge passed through this battery. 72 microcoulombs. How much charge passes through this battery? Well, 24 microcoulombs comes from this one, and 48 microcoulombs comes from this one, and 48 plus 24 is 40, 50, 60, 72. Makes sense. How much charge passes through this battery? 84 microcoulombs. 48 microcoulombs goes like that. 24 microcoulombs goes like that. And 12 microcoulombs goes like that. 48 plus 12 is 60, 70, 84. <gasps> These three add up to that one. It all makes sense. So those are my example problems of how to deal with um, capacitors, either in series or in parallel. <clears throat> I'd also like to point out that in this example, the one with the larger capacitance does hold more charge, and the one with the smaller capacitance holds less charge in a two-to-one ratio. And here, the one with the most capacitance holds the most charge, and the one with the least capacitance holds the least charge. And the amounts of charge are in a one-to-two-to-four ratio, 12 to 24 to 48 is a one to two to four ratio. All right. <clears throat> now I'm gonna set up one more circuit and give you an opportunity to think about it. What if I have two capacitors in parallel? And then in series with that, another two capacitors in parallel. What? So here's a battery, let's say 12 volts. And I have two capacitors in parallel. So there's this one. And there's this one. Those are in parallel. Could go this way or this way. And then I have another two in parallel. I'm back. So I'm just going to tell you how you would approach this. You would redraw this circuit. These are in parallel, so you would replace them with just one capacitor. So you would take this capacitance and this capacitance, and you would add them, because that's how you combine capacitors in parallel. And then, oh, these two are in parallel as well, C3 and C4. So you would replace them with one capacitor, and its capacitance is C3 plus C4. Then you would 
redraw again, you would re-redraw and we'd keep our 12 volt battery. And then we would have one and only one final equivalent capacitor. And what I would do, this is a number, this is a number. So I would find this number, one over C equivalent, because these two are now in series, equals one over C1 plus C2, plus one over C3 plus C4. Now that looks like hard algebra to do, but don't worry, this would just be a number, this would be a number. And then you would have this equivalent capacitance. And I would say, okay, so the I know the capacitance and now I know the voltage. So I would find the charge and I would take this charge, whatever it is, and I would put it both here and here because these two are in series. And then once I know the capacitance, because I already found that, and I know the charge, then I would use Q equals CV to find the voltage here. And I would take this voltage and I would put it both there and there. And I would find this voltage and put it both there and there. Isn't that fun? And then another problem you could look at is what if I had two in series? Well, that looks so easy. But then I had another parallel branch with two in series. Oh, C1, C2, C3, C4. How would you redraw? And then how would you re-redraw? And then how would you rebuild and find everything here? Very similar to these steps. You do them just in a different order. All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I hope I've blown your mind. Uh, and it's okay to watch this more than once, regardless of how many times you do it. I hope you have a great time and don't break any laws of physics.